I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? And welcome to Fox 40's Super Saturday Cinema. Today, the Civil War was almost over. Now, the private war could begin. Somebody in my outfit had to be giving you information. I want him. John Wayne in Rio Lobo is next. This is Matt once again. We're about to another review. And this is another paid request. This time from Lily B. From my Patreon. Thank you so much for that. If anyone was ever interested in requesting... Pretty much any type of video it doesn't have to be just reviews. It can be or re-reviews, but pretty much any type reaction, top it list, what have you. You just send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. Now this is from a film called Rio Lobo, and I will be honest, I did not think I would be ranting on this film. Because while I had not seen the film, I looked at it and went, okay, it's directed by Howard Hawks. I mean, Howard Hawks, he did The Big Sleep with Humphrey Bogart. He did Rio Bravo with John Wayne and Dean Martin, which was an inspiration for John Carpenter when he did films like Song Priest of 13, because Howard Hawks is one of his favorite directors. The theme for Another World from the 50s, one of my favorite science fiction films of the 50s. I love the theme for Another World. Howard Hawks worked on that movie. This was the last film Howard Hawks did. And... Come to find out, if you look a bit online, I'm not the only one that disliked this movie. Even Quentin Tarantino. He, there, I forget where it was. Quentin Tarantino said at one point, one of the reasons I want to have a short career like movies, movie making, is because I looked at someone like Howard Hawks, who made these classics. I don't want to make you know, these last two or three movies that should not have been made. I don't want to make a real Lobo. So even Tarantino's like, this film sucks. This movie is so fucking dull, so fucking boring. And no, I'm not expecting a Michael Bay action movie. I'm not expecting Wall Wall action. I'm not expecting ninjas to fucking come out of nowhere and fight John Wayne. I'm not expecting that. I With westerns, maybe I'm not the biggest western guy, but there's westerns I've enjoyed. I love Young Guns, yes. I, I liked The Wild Bunch. I liked the newer, even the newer Magnificent Seven, I liked. I liked uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, High Plains, Drifter, Fist for Dollars for a few dollars more. There are Westerns I've enjoyed. Yes, I would even put Jane to Unchained above this, definitely. I, it just, Rio Lobo. Number one, it's a weird time to make a Western like this. Because this film, this movie felt so old-fashioned. I was shocked to see it was came out in 1970. Because this seems like a western from 20 years before, you know, but in color. 
It, it looks like something that honestly would be made for TV. It does. It, there's nothing in this movie that has a scope or has any amount of big movie theater scale to it. Again, you watch an episode of Bonanza or Rawhide and you get the same production as you do in this. Honestly. John Wayne, he was getting old. Now, I've never talked about John Wayne on this channel. Because John Wayne was, in a way, before my time. I was born in 83. By the time I get to know more about movies, I'm like 6, 7 years old. It's 89, 1990. And by that point, the movies I'm watching of action is like Sylvester Stallone, George Wall Van Damme, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the early days of Steven Seagal, Dolph Lundgren, Chuck Norris, and the like. So, and even Clint Eastwood, because you'd have, like, In the Line of Fire, and, you know, rewatching like, the Dirty Harry films, including The Deadpool, and Heartbreak Ridge, that's a good one. I didn't see that when I was a kid, granted, but I'd seen clips of it, to be honest, but not the whole film, but I do like that movie. <clears throat> but, you know, I had seen other, you know, Clint Eastwood, The Rookie, which I enjoy with Charlie Sheen. So I I knew of John Wayne. I've seen a couple movies like the Green Berets, but I didn't watch a ton of his movies. And I don't mind John Wayne as a presence. It's not like John Wayne's the reason this film sucks. Although, granted, he was a bit over the hill by the time by this timeline, because I know later on in the seventies he passed away in the seventies. I forget what year, because he was ill. The reason he was ill, because he did that fucking movie where he played Genghis Khan. And the thing about that fucking movie is they filmed it where... Where was it that they filmed it? They filmed it at a spot where pretty much everyone got fucking radiation sickness. Or something to that effect, right? They filmed it at a place... Most people got so goddamn sick, most of them died from cancer years later, including John fucking Wayne. So, because someone, I guess, had their head up their fucking ass and didn't know something called safety. Don't believe it, look it up. John Wayne Ding is con. You look up that movie, look up the, the batch story. It's fucking sad for all the people involved with that. And for that movie. But, yeah, so John Wayne's ill, he's old, and he's just not able to do much. But John Wayne, he did have the presence, he did have that bigger life persona. He was the only thing you could gravitate towards acting-wise in this movie. Just the rest, Chris Mitchum, which I'm sorry, he doesn't have his dad, Robert Mitchum's stature or presence. This other guy who got pretty much his second bill... What the hell was his name? Jorge Ribeiro. He was fucking awful. I've never heard of this guy before. I guess he was an actor from... I forget if it was Mexico or something. This guy was fucking awful. I did not like his acting at all. Uh, Jennifer O'Neill. Didn't care for her acting. The story. The Union Army. There's a payroll on a train. Some Confederates hijacked it. The, even that scene's not that exciting. Uh, they dumped some hornets so the Union soldiers jump off. Confederate soldiers jump off. John Wayne rides in, finds his buddy. Apparently his neck is broken. Dies like the next day or so. So John Wayne wants to find out who did it. He just not doubt. It's funny that one of the lines when they're pulling him out from knocking him out. He's in sort of the, the river or whatever. They're pulling him out. And someone says, he's heavier than a baby whale. <laughs> Which, I'm surprised that line survived. Just showing how John Wayne got fat. But he's heavier than a baby whale. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised that line stayed in. And then easily, John Wayne leads him into an ambush. Even though these two guys helped get his buddy killed... He becomes quickly friends with them. And they even ask. After the war's over. And John Wayne visits them as they're leaving. And they're being released. 
you know, surprised that you're so easy going with us. Well, what you guys were doing, Pilgrim, that was an act of war. But the guy who sold the trees and stuff, that's uh, pretty much the guy who committed treason, who was a union, who sold the information to them. He's worse. So that's the guy he wants. What you guys did, Pilgrim, he doesn't say Pilgrim, but was an act of war. That's not even how John Wayne sounds. I don't know how to fuck to do John Wayne. I don't know how to do impressions. So, th like the movie, it's almost like the plot of the movie doesn't get started till halfway through or something. It just sort of this build up. Okay, but is it going to lead to somewhere? At one point, John Wayne rides into this town, meets up with a, a buddy of his who's a sheriff there. This woman comes in. Oh, you don't do something? Someone I know died in the town over. I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't do anything. That's not my jurisdiction. I'm in this town. Yeah, but so you're not going to do anything? Then there's some assholes there at a tavern. There's a, a little shootout. The acting isn't that good. Some almost albino looking guy gets shot. And Jorge Ribeiro, one of the two Confederates, like, that's the, that's one of the guys who helped us get the information. What about the other? It's in Rio Lobo, so they go to Rio Lobo. And again, there's no scope to it, there's no epicness to it. I was even disappointed with the score by Jerry Goldsmith. I'm like, Jerry Goldsmith did the music? But even the score just, I don't know, it just didn't do anything for me, sadly. It just felt like a TV movie that was dull and so out of time for a movie in 1970. Yeah, I realized years before, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly came out in 1967. Think about that. The, no, the Man With No Name trilogy in the 60s. The, the Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, three years before this. You look at The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, a fistful of dollars for a few dollars more, and you look at this movie. And it's just people that they thought they were making a film for the 50s when it's, this is 1970, this is not the case. I don't know what movie you're doing and it's so, it was so fucking boring. It was so boring. Just barely anything happened. Like really nothing happened. This lame romance with Jorge Ribeiro and Jennifer O'Neill. I think you two suck in the movie. I don't give a shit if you sucked each other off. They fuck around, fuck around, fuck around. There's no interesting dialogue. There's no interesting interactions. Chris Mitchum is arrested. He disappears for a good chunk of the movie. They go, they get help from someone's father, Old Man Phillips, who's Jack Elam. Jack Elam, he, if you've seen the Cannibal Run movie, when Burr Reynolds and Dumb DeLuise get the ambulance... And there's a crazy doctor with like a weird eye. That's Jack Elam. He was in films like Creature from Black Lake. That's a film I, I did enjoy. He, he's older actor. He does bring some humor to it. But it's not enough to save the film. They they get this to this guy. They want to sign, to sign these deeds. Because the fucker over the land. The guy's legs burn up a bit. Then they put the guy in jail. Then almost immediately Jorge is riding off somewhere. He gets taken. We don't make a switch. They make a switch. This little dinky shootout. The most impressive thing that happens. Impressive is. One of them has a dynamite. John Wayne shoots him. The dynamite flies a little bit. Then a wide shot of a one shot exploding. And yeah, when you look at like some of the spaghetti westerns came up before. Like. The Man With No Name trilogy? This is nothing, man. And by the way, a fist full of dollars for a few dollars. When you watch those movies, they're not like action a minute movies. Where there's an action every five minutes. No, but they got style and ambiance and the atmosphere and the music. And this is Howard Hawks thinking he's directing... Really, honestly, he directed a TV movie. A John Wayne TV movie. That's what it felt like. That... Again, those no epic scope shots of the land. 
and then they have an epic feel to it. The action is lackadaisical. Even the, the bad guy. The bad guy's gun misfires, hits his face. Then this other girl, not John Wayne, not even, th this other girl's like, turn around so you can see who kills you. And then that's it. And then John Wayne sort of helps her to walk over and then the end. And you go, I guess that's the end for real Lobo. I did, like I said, I did not think I was going to be ranting on a Howard Hawks John Wayne film, but that's the case because this film is fucking dull and it's fucking boring. I'm not going to fucking lie, but it's fucking dull and boring. There's so many other better westerns. High Plains Drifter, better western. Man with No Name Trilogy, better western. Rio Bravo, better western. Or, hell, go with sci-fi western. Outland. Outland is a sci-fi version of High Noon. Outland with Sean Connery, great western. It's in our space, but it's a great one. Where he plays a marshal. Go watch Outland. Go watch Young Guns. Go watch Denzel's Magnificent Seven movie. Go watch plenty of other westerns than Real Lobo. Obviously, if you're into Howard Hawks, John Wayne, you want to see Howard Hawks' last film, go ahead. If you found it not boring... I don't get it, but that's cool. To to Lily B, if she likes the film, that's cool. To me, th this was just a very boring fucking film. I was surprised how dull this film was. Again, I'm not. I went in the mindset going, "This is not going to be you know, action a minute. That's not the type of film it was." But just not the production of a TV show. It just. Like, okay, maybe the train bit at the beginning. Other than that bit, the rest of it does feel like a TV show. And it just... Even when you watch the theme for Another World, like, the way they spit that dialogue out, it's just... The conversations are interesting and full of life. You get none of that in this. None of the conversations can bring you any amount of interest. But I think you watch the theme for another world and how the characters interact with each other. It's a, it, it, that movie peps along with dialogue, but it's like, you know, people's reactions and the way they interact with each other and they're goofing on their captain because they know the captain likes his lady and they're giving him a hard time. So, yeah, you know, you know they're, he's giving them a hard time. The one guy reporter, oh, you never did a good picture, and they're making fun of him, and this has none of that. I don't know what the hell. I don't know what the hell happened. Lame supporting cast. John Wayne's bit over the hill. Barely any action. What's there is TV movie quality. And, like I said, out of its time. It did not know what year it was in, 1970. Old fashioned can be used in a bad, in a good way, but this is how to do it in a bad way. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.